Hello everyone. In last week's video, we took a look at corridor side slope benching using only stock subassemblies in Civil 3D. And as promised this week, we're going to take a look at creating custom benching subassemblies using the subassembly composer application. Now one note, there are several ways to do this. This is just one method that you may employ for building these uh, custom benches, but there's other ways in the composer to do this. Another side note is we're not going to go through a lot of the basics of composer. If you need a review or kind of how to get started with the Civil Assembly Composer application, I advise you to watch a video series by my colleague Jeff Bartles, where he, I think there's five or six videos where he steps through the basics of the application. So we're going to focus on just getting the geometry correct. We're not going to really focus on all the coding and parameters. So here I am. I'm in a new, you can see I'm just in an empty Civil Assembly here. And we're just going to start from scratch. Before I get started, I do need one parameter here. And notice on the target parameters, I'm going to create a surface, which is going to be my target. And I'm going to name it EG. And again, typically I would be building a lot of input parameters and maybe some other target parameters. But in this case, I'm not really worried about that. So I'm going to start by dragging a point on the screen. This will be at the origin at 0, 0. And now I'm going to go with an auxiliary point. So this is basically a ghost point. I'm going to go up and test and see, am I in the simple cut case where I don't need a bench? That's what this point is going to be for. So I'm going to turn off add link to point. I don't need a link. And I'm going to basically start from P1 and I'm going to do a slope and delta Y. And you may remember from last week, we were using a two to one slope for 10 foot of uh, vertical height. You can see that point when I fit the screen, you can see it placed up here. So we're just getting it up there so we can run a test. So no targets on this one, no surface target, it's just a point. So now this is where we need our decision. So I'm gonna grab the decision and drag it in. Notice how that connects. And so in the decision, we're gonna need an expression. Well, if we go to the help menu, that's where we can find an expression. Now, if I go under this calculating property area, API functions, and then the P1 class, at the very bottom, there is this distance to surface test. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to copy that and place it in the expression. I have to clean it up because my point name is AP1. Notice AP1 at the top that has to match. And then my existing surface is not called existing surface. It's called EG. So if EG is greater than zero, I'm sorry, if the distance to surface is greater than zero, that means AP1 is actually above the surface, and I just want a simple slope to the surface, cut slope with no bench. So that'll be my true case. And then false, I'll go and work on the benching. So let's start with the true. So I'm going to drag a regular point out. Over here beside true, notice how it automatically linked to true. And we're going to do slope to surface. And we're going to start from P1. Remember, AP1 was just a test point. Our slope is 2 to 1. Surface target is EG. We're going to add link to point, and now we fit the screen. So what I'm going to do here is, using my cursor, I'm going to highlight the EG line, and I'm going to move it a bit. So you can see now, if EG falls, I'm just holding my left button down on the mouse and dragging and releasing. So as long as that point is higher, you can see, then the EG we're going to have a simple cut slope. So that's within a 10 foot height. That is exactly what we would like. And if we go above our AP1, where the false statement is, you can see that it disappears. So let's work on the false statement. So what do we need? Well, we need a point. We're going to place a fixed segment of that size and then a bench. So let's go and drag a point over here on the false side. And sometimes your arrows will connect incorrectly. So just highlight over your arrow and delete. And then I'm going to drag a new line for the faults. 
And the first segment, we're going to go back up and we're going to do a slope and delta y. So we're going to force in this cut slope. We're going to go from, if point 0.1 doesn't show up here, a lot of times you can come back over here, click the parameters, and maybe click back on this one. And now you can see it shows up. Sometimes you just have to click and move out of the dialog. So there we go back to P1. We're going to do slope and delta Y. You can see it's already set 50% slope or two to one for 10 feet. We're just going to stop with there. We're going to add a link to the point. And then next we're going to add another point underneath that. This will be our little 2% bench. So this is going to be a slope and delta X because we know the width of this guy. We're going to go from P3 and we're, let's do a positive 2%. And we'll do eight feet. I believe that's what we used last week. I apologize if that's slightly different. We're going to add a link. So there we go. So that's, we're happy with that, but uh, we're not seeking the surface, number one. And we're not following the ground. We're not considering EG. So you have to be careful where you click on that EG to get it to move when you drag it. So what we're going to employ here is the loop geometry option. So we're going to drag loop geometry in. Move that a bit. And first we have to decide how many numbers of repetition, how many times do we want to repeat this test or this geometry? So let's do three to start with. And now which links do you want to add? So it's going to be L2 and L3, or I can click the button and select in the graphics. You can see L2, L3, or I could have typed those in. Surface target. In other words, this loop is gonna consider or react to which surface target. Well, EG, the same, right? So let's see what we have so far. I'm gonna go back and grab my EG. Notice as I move it up, it's basically reacting to as long as that surface target is high enough so that another iteration can fit, it will place it. But notice I only have three max because I said set it to max three. So now as I go up, nothing happens. Okay, and as I go down, it's gonna make sure that I can fit an entire iteration or loop in between there. So now what I really need is just a simple cut slope to finish up that catch. So let's just go down to point place a point in, and now we're going to do slope to surface. We're going to go from, this is a key here. Notice we get a special endpoint because it varies, right? The endpoint could be P4 in, in the drawing up there, or it could be P7. But we have this endpoint that finds that endpoint. And we're going to do a two to one. Surface target is EG. We're going to add a link to the point. There we go. So now let's test, move the EG up. So even after my three repetition has finished, I'm still gonna find that catch slope. So what if I come down? I'm still finding my catch, right? If I'm in between, and then if I go down into the 10 foot zone, I get my simple cut slope. So this is very close to what we were wanting. And so very easy, quick uh, order here, we were able to punch that out. So I'm going to go to packet settings and name this uh, bench Allen. Again, you can see I didn't put in the parameters I normally would. I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'll just call it the same name, bench Allen, PKT. So I'll close this. I'll go to civil 3D. I'm in the same test file that I was in last week. So first we're going to add this to the palette. I'll click on the tool palettes command. I'm going to right click and do a new palette, call it custom. Cause I need to bring in that PKT. I'm going to right click now, import sub assemblies. We'll go find that uh, sub assembly bench Allen. There it is. We're going to put it on the custom tool palette. I'm going to right click refresh image. Make sure that refreshed. It did. And so now I'm going to place it directly onto that assembly. Remember on the right side, we used a stock sub assembly. I'm just going to delete that. 
highlight and delete, and then I'm going to click on my new one and place it here. You can see the graphics doesn't show much. That's okay. My corridor needs to update the targets. So I'm going to right click, go to properties, set all targets. Here's my new target. Set it to the same existing ground. Now we're going to rebuild the corridor. Notice I have instances where I do not find the target. That is because I have fill, the fill scenario too, and I did not try to uh, deal with that situation. So you can see here, it seems to be working fine. Let's go and move this. Uh, I'm going to move my sample line along here to see how it behaves. So if you would watch on the right screen, there we're adding benches. Let's go down to where there's very little cut. You can see on the right side, we're getting exactly what uh, we were looking for. So again, that's just one way to go into the subassembly composer and to create a custom bench side slope subassembly. There's other ways to do it, but I just wanted to show you one that uh, works well. Hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.